Hello students, in this video we're going to derive the um, coefficients a0, an, and uh, I'm just going to state the definition for bn. Its derivation is similar to the derivation of an, and I'll leave that as an exercise. Alright, so suppose that you have a Fourier series expansion of a function. Um, in other words, what we're doing here is we are building a function, um, you could think of it as we're approximating a function similar to you, to what you would do with a Taylor series using sines and cosines. In other words, if f were a signal, for example, then um, we would be building that signal based on these frequencies, n pi over l, and uh, this frequency, n pi over l, and um, the waves, um, that are given by the cosine and sine. So as you increase the frequency, these uh, start to wiggle more and more. So um, you go from low frequency content to high frequency content. You add them all together and you get, add all those waves together and you get this signal. That's one perspective for a Fourier series expansion of a function. All right, so um, in order to build this function, um, we need to determine what these um, constants are. And this is also relevant to um, if you're studying things like partial differential equations and solutions to partial differential equations, um, you want to know what these arbitrary constants are. Okay, so let's proceed. First, um, I have to make it clear I'm making some assumptions here. And uh, once again, I'll leave these as an exercise. This is just a Calc 1 um, exercise or a Calc 2 exercise um, to, to to be blunt here, um, if you multiply a cosine um, m pi over l um, times a cosine of n pi over l x, um, then if uh, m is not equal to n, then uh, you'll end up getting a zero, where um, if they are equal but greater than zero, then you get l, and if um, m equals n is zero, then of course you're integrating just from l to l dx, and um, you'll end up with an x and then you'll have l minus minus l so it's l plus l you get 2l okay um, similarly I'm just I'm going to assume that you can do this integration sine times sine to get um, 0 if m is not equal to n and l if m is equal to n if m is equal to n and then um, if you multiply sine times cosine and integrate you're just going to get 0 so um, the term for this uh, here is um, that the uh, sines and cosines are orthogonal to one another and um, there's a notation for that. Um, we use this uh, scalar product notation f, um, the scalar product of f and g is you know, we're just uh, integrating f against g and so I can rewrite um, these uh, um, results using this um, inner product notation um, so the parentheses um, indicate that I'm integrating cosine n pi l x for, um, against a cosine of m pi l of x. And then, of course, I get the same results. Um, if you're integrating f against sine, for example, it would look like the integral of um, minus l l of um, f of x times sine of n pi over l of x dx. Something to keep in mind is that um, this scalar product is linear so that if you have f plus g comma h um, that's just that integral and then you could distribute the h and you get um, it's like you can distribute the h and you, this gets broken up into um, the uh, scalar product of f plus g of h is the scalar product of f h plus g h okay so that's important because we're going to end up taking um, to solve for a n and b n um, we're going to um, take a scalar product of f against um, a cosine function. Um, and that will do to solve for a n. Okay, so let's do that. So if I take the scalar product of f against cosine m pi over lx. Now what I'm going to try to do here is um, since I'm integrating cosine against cosine, um, I will get 0 when m is not equal to n, but I'll get l's or 2l's in the first case. But when I integrate the um, cosine against the sine, this result um, down here means I'm going to get um, zeros. So I'll eliminate all the bn's and I'll um, be able to pick off the am as in Mary 
um, components because that one will equal L and all the others will be zero. So it's um, by integrating against the cosine, um, I'll be able to pick off the relevant um, coefficients. Now, um, some of you may notice that um, this scalar product is an integral, so I'm integrating past the infinite series, and there are uh, certain conditions for f that would allow me to do that. Um, for the purposes of this video and for the purposes of just solving for a to a n, um, let's just assume that that is a legal move. Okay. All right, so uh, um, recall that um, I'm integrating um, the cosine here in this first case, and um, that's going to equal zero if m is not zero. So that's um, the uh, case that we get here, and um, that's because you get a sine. And if you plug in l's, you'll the l's will cancel, and you just get m pi's. But if m is equal to zero, then cosine of zero is one, so you just get this integral. And so you're either going to get a zero when um, m is not zero, or you're going to get a two l. Um, when m is equal to 0, and that would be the a0 case, and so the 2's will cancel, and uh, you'll see what ha will happen here. You'll have a, an a0 times l. Uh, in the other case, um, remember that this inner product, uh, or scalar product, is going to be 0, and this one will equal 0 or l, depending on if m is equal to n or not. So let's consider the a0 case. In that case, m is equal to 0, so... Um, I factored out the one half a naught in this integral, and that equals one half a naught. And then remember that this will equal two l because m is equal to zero in this case. That's this case here. Um, the twos will cancel, and I can now solve a naught times l equals this inner product of f, which is just the integral of f from minus l to l. So if I divide by l, I get a naught is equal to one over l the integral from minus l to l of f of x dx. Now, uh, what about when m is greater than 0? Now there, um, remember, if m is not equal to n, this integral is 0. So all these sum, the sum of all these terms will mostly be 0. The only one that survives is when m it happens to be equal to n. So when n is equal to m, we'll get an l. That's the only thing that will survive. So all of this series will mostly be 0, except for that one case where m is equal to n, and you get an l. So boom, the l pops down, and that's in the case where m is equal to n. So um, this integral leaves us with am times l. But if I divide both sides by l, I end up with am equaling 1 over l, the integral from minus l to l of f of x integrated against this cosine function. And um, similarly, um, you could do that for um, b sub m, and uh, you'll get something um, much, uh, very much alike. Here you're integrating with sine, so of course this term will be 0. You're integrating a cosine against a sine. Because of this result, you get 0. And um, the, only thing that, the only things that will survive are the sines when m is equal to n. Those are our Fourier coefficients, and the a sub m is a, um, we call that a cosine transform, and um, the um, b sub m is a sine transform, and if you're familiar with anything to do with signal processing, you might know something about the discrete cosine transform, and that is the, this is the continuous version of the discrete cosine transform, or the discrete cosine transform is the discrete version of this cosine transform. And um, that shows up in signal processing. So that tells us that um, this signal, um, we can build it um, using these, um, um, these are coefficients as our building blocks. Now this is going to give us constant values. Remember, these are integrals, so these are going to map the constants. Um, I can get real fancy and start talking about projecting into spaces, but I'm going to stop there um, because I just want to focus on the mechanics of solving for the a sub m's and the b sub m's. All right, good luck.